Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace in Darling Harbour, Sydney, Australia. And we're gonna take on a challenge and that is which one is the best thing to do in low light or in the dark? Should you use a really low ISO value and a slow shutter speed or should you crank up the ISO and use a faster shutter speed? Which one is gonna give you the best image, the best image quality? Well, we know there's a trade-off between those two things. So ISO, the higher it goes, the more noise you'll see in your image. But on the other side, the shutter speed, the slower it goes, the more motion blur you'll see in your image. So do we wanna show motion or freeze motion? And how much noise is gonna be reasonable? What can we use there? So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna shoot Sydney, or, uh, Darling Harbor. Right behind me, there's the cityscape. There's some boats down on the water. They're moving a little bit. The water's moving a little bit, but pretty much nothing back there is moving. And because motion is really the thing that we're worried about with our shutter speed, with a scene like this, we can start with a really, really slow shutter. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm shooting with my Leica M10 here, and I have a 28 millimeter lens. I've set it at F8, and we're gonna first shoot an image at ISO 100. So let me step over here. I'm gonna look through my viewfinder, and this is telling me that my exposure is 16 seconds. So I'm gonna take a 16 second exposure. I've already focused this previously. So this is gonna go for 16 seconds. And what that means, if there's anything that's moving, that's gonna show up in this image. But the cool thing is water usually looks better with a slow shutter speed. It sort of smooths all that stuff out. And so when we look at our final image, you can see that it looks very pleasing. And so in this instant, a low ISO and a slow shutter speed wins. But just to prove that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reshoot this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change my ISO. I'm gonna change that from 100. We're gonna go all the way up to ISO 3200. That means my shutter speed is now a half a second. So I'll shoot that, click, it's a half a second. And when we play this back and look at it, we can see, well, the noise isn't too bad, but notice the difference in the water. The water looks much better with that slow shutter speed. And if we really zoom in on the image, you can see that the noise in the high ISO image just isn't really pleasing. So with things that aren't moving at night, I would say shoot with a slow shutter speed and a low ISO. But what happens if you're trying to shoot something that's moving? Maybe you're shooting along the street or you're trying to shoot something like cars or whatever, and you wanna freeze that motion. Well then, that's a totally different story. So let's do that next. We've seen what happens when everything is still motionless. We had our camera on a tripod, the buildings weren't moving. The only thing that was really moving in the last picture was the water and the boat, just a little bit. But we were able to take our ISO way down and use a long shutter speed. But now, I'm on Calco Bay Wharf. There's people walking around. There's this really cool nightlife. I wanna take a few pictures of the people and the scenes here, and I'm gonna do that without a tripod and without a flash. And that means, if I do this with a low ISO, my shutter speed is just gonna be so slow, we're talking about a half second, a full second exposure, that it's just gonna be a big blurry mess. So in this situation, I have to take my ISO way up. So I'm gonna put my ISO up to ISO 6400, maybe even a little bit higher. I'm shooting at a wide open aperture of F2 with the 35 millimeter lens, and that way, now I can shoot handheld walking around without a tripod that can get away with this type of photography. So this might work if you're shooting a birthday party or a wedding or any kind of event where you can't have a tripod or a flash. And so let's do that right now. We'll walk through here and I'll show you my results. Well, the glory of high ISO is that you can shoot handheld with scenes like this. So I'm shooting at F2 and I don't have a tripod, but I can still capture the scene with the Ferris wheel and all the boats and everything. And at 6,400, that is a 60th of a second exposure, which is totally fine shooting handheld. You know, with a scene like this right here, I can shoot that because it's emitting light with an ISO of around, oh, I'm gonna do 800, maybe 1,000, and we'll see how that works. We don't need that much. I'm still at 90th of a second. And I can really just play with this scene back here. It's gonna look really, really cool. So what did we learn? 
Well, we learned that if we're shooting something that's not moving, like a building or a mountain or maybe even the ocean, and the camera is on a tripod, we can use a very low ISO value and then let that shutter just hang for 20, 30 seconds or even a few minutes. But if we're shooting something handheld, we're walking around in low light and we don't have a flash, what we need to do is we need to open up our aperture to let in a lot of light and boost the ISO, something like 6400, 3200, or even higher than that. So, the question is, how high can you go with your ISO? Well, the good news is that most newer cameras handle high ISO values very well. So it's not like a really grainy, noisy nastiness that we used to get just a few years ago. Now we can shoot at ISO 6400 or 12,800 and it's totally acceptable. But it really depends on the camera and how old it is. So do some experiments with your camera. Take your camera, open up the aperture, take your uh, ISO value and play with it. Put it at 800, take some pictures, put it at 16, 32 and on up and see where it gets to be a little bit too noisy. And then you'll know what that high ISO limit is for you and your camera. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. It was a ton of fun. I love hanging out here in Sydney, Australia. I'll be in Australia for a few more months. So make sure that you don't miss a single episode. We've got a lot of cool things planned here for Australia. And you can make sure you don't miss an episode by clicking subscribe. So click that subscribe button right now. Also, check me out on Instagram. You can see my trip through Australia and around the world. And you can see how I put some of these practical tips into everyday use. I'm posting pictures every day. So make sure you check that out as well. Thanks again for joining me. And I will see you again next time.